Saturday at High Limit, you had this situation at Texas Motor Speedway where they had a uh, very good car count. Uh, this this car count that they had uh, was was really really stout. So uh, Texas Motor Speedway, obviously tandoing with the NASCAR weekend, this thing worked out to the point where you know they didn't have an issue with cars. They didn't have an issue uh, with with getting drivers to show up. I believe it's thirty nine. Uh, big packed house. You see it here at Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, there really wasn't nothing bad. I mean, I was concerned with Texas Motor Speedway potentially having some track surface issues. Um, it look it looks like or looked like based on the replay of the racing events that they overworked the track to make sure that they didn't sustain any of the issues that TMS has traditionally been having here in recent memory. Uh, but it was fairly successful, and this is a big deal for them because their championship. Uh, you know, battle war is going to be faced on this racetrack on October 11th and 12th. So this was kind of the prelude to what fans can expect. And I think for them, nailed it, knocked it out of the park, not only in, in the track surface issues that I think a lot of people were concerned about, but also in the fans and even the race. You had a decent little race with Anthony Macri and, uh, um, you know, Tyler Courtney for the win. But you also had a situation that most people... Uh, came a- away from like, what the hell was that? I've already had a few phone calls about it and said, Chaz, did you see what the hell happened? And uh, and that had to do or had to deal with this scenario. Hold on, let's get you a little bit bigger here on the screen. That had to do with this scenario with uh, Wayne Johnson had an issue, a wreck uh, contact made with uh, John Carney uh, where he got hit on the top side of the car and then came to arrest on the back straightaway. Now, some people were upset, uh, and it see, I even saw Dominic Selzy make a post, but some people were upset on how the fire safety crew acted in this scenario. I heard some people say they were just standing around and didn't really know what to do, and, and why did they not flip the car over? Um, not really saying there's a right or wrong thing here. I mean, MedStar is obviously one of the best safety crews, situations, labels, organizations, whatever you want to call MedStar, uh, in dirt track racing. They've represented very well, went always above and beyond, and, and have has a, they've always been the benchmark of what most you know fire safety crews at racing events look to be. Um, there, like I said, I heard people complaining about the time it took. It, it does look like potentially a little understaffed, especially for something like Texas Motor Speedway. Um, with the situation, medics are on the scene now. Now, that's that's where I want to point it out on why there might have been a delay on getting this car on all four. So, I mean, this contact happens in this video at 10 seconds in. And there is a guy at the car at 27.30. So it took 20 seconds from the moment of contact for a guy to get to the car. I'd say from the moment of resting on the speedway, it looks like 13 to 30. So about 17, 18 seconds of resting before a car got to, or for a, uh, a safety official got to the car. And I would assume based on some of the injuries that we heard or are hearing uh, that happened here, uh, obviously Wayne Johnson, we're going to give you an update on him in just a second. Um, at least from what we can tell you, a, a lot of people are saying, why didn't they do nothing to the car? Now, I'm hearing that potentially Wayne Johnson was alert. It looks like he definitely was. We saw him moving in the car when I was watching the video earlier. Not going to play it because Flo is such a, you know, you, you know, what a, but it sounds like he may have been vocal in some pain. Obviously, I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't a situation where Wayne Johnson was slightly concussed. I mean, we are in sprint cars running 120, 140 miles an hour, and maybe even off the corner, 80 to 100 miles an hour. This was a very fast track, a very fast four tenths. I mean, two fists, sorry, just had to make that joke. Four tenths is apparently a joke in the dirt racing world now because it's not a a true measurement. It's two fists. But honestly... Maybe hurt, maybe concussed, maybe yelling, maybe saying definitely he's got some pain because what we're going to read to you doesn't sound good. And in most scenarios, when a driver is, you know, expressing, you know, discomfort to the level I believe he was, it's sometimes, you know, they sometimes tell you to not move. Like if there was a potential back injury, which is what we've been experiencing in sprint car racing here for a while, um... You know, you don't want to really move that car right off the jump 
without kind of getting secondary approval or figuring things out to its completion. Obviously, I don't see any fuel or fluids on the ground. Obviously, that would have been a big issue if we're talking about fire or something like that to initially get the car over as fast as possible. But I, I do know just by dealing with safety officials that if you get to a scene and a driver is expressing discomfort and maybe concussed or, or however he's feeling, like I said, I don't know. I ain't seen the conversation. I don't know if there was a GoPro that had the conversation here. But if the driver's feeling hurt and it's a sprint car you and you don't know for sure what it is, you sometimes don't want to move the driver at all. You don't want to just flip. The, we've all seen how these cars crash down when they do pull them back over and flop them onto the ground. And if a driver potentially has an issue with his back, a back injury, you don't want to just turn the car over. So it kind of made sense when I rewatched this. I saw everybody you know, complaining like, what are they doing? Why are they just staying there? You notice once the medics come over, which is the blue shirts, it seems like they kind of are getting word here from a a fire safety official asking a question or two because people are still waiting. This is a a minute into an official arriving before they actually flip this car over. Um, So there is potentiality that the reason that delay took place was because of the uh, potential back injuries that was sustained in the situation. And and I think that's just the only explanation I can give you. If it was just because they're stupid, that that's, that's is what it is. But I just don't think that MedStar is that stupid. Now this is an update uh, from Wayne Johnson's Facebook page. It says, this is Sarah. Uh, He is home resting, or I believe that's what that is meant to be saying there, resting comfortably, uh, it was a nasty wreck, but he is super fortunate. There's a 20 centimeter laceration on his right forearm that will re- that will require some surgery. It got into his muscles slash tendons, and his hand isn't working. That's very sad to hear. Uh, plan is to see a specialist Monday or Tuesday. Thanks for all the prayers. So that's kind of an update with the situation on Wayne Johnson. Obviously, like I said, it's, I would assume if that was the case, when those safety officials arrived to the car, discomfort was probably there. Uh, uh, some kind of feeling of agony being expressed was probably there. And then how could you properly communicate if you're in that amount of pain? I think that might have been incurring. How could you properly communicate to safety officials? Oh, my back's fine. Oh, I don't feel anything wrong with my back, especially apparently his hand wasn't working here. They were saying his hand still isn't working. Usually, you know, those types of things can lead towards some kind of issue with the back. Potentially your back kind of controls all your uh, mechanics. So a lot of reasons that that car might have not just got flipped over instantly. Like I see a lot of people upset about now. Some people may be upset about something else. But that's what I've heard the, the complaining be about is how long it took for that car to come straight up or, or upright. So regardless, that's the situation with Wayne Johnson, and uh, we will see. Now, we will we will say the guy who picked it up, the win, at the end of the day, Anthony Macri, who is uh, definitely bouncing back strong here in uh, 2024, especially after last year, the, the, the rekindling of the spirit of the 39M and Anthony Macri seems to be hitting on more than just one cylinder, but all eight, and he is flying in the 39M car. Uh, he he was, you know, put on a pretty good show there with Tyler Courtney. It was back and forth, but you could kind of just tell that Anthony Macri was just a little bit better. On to Sunday. I'll show you what you want, all the hurt, all the tears, sweat and pain, all the days sitting in the shop for when the cold are hot, I take it and I talk about another race. Listen, please best believe all the things I see in the bickering of the shit you preach. And they're hating on me for everything I've done Trying to bring my focus, you don't know about the tribe Not this on the track, but late into the night Spiking all this fuel and doping all these ties Not to break the rules, but just to bend those lines And if you call me out, I'm coming straight up out the crops so we can do some meddling, get a little 